In this video, we're gonna cover what the zone is and three principles that you wanna focus on to play in the zone more often. Hey there, I'm Eli Straw, mental performance coach and the founder of successstartwithin.com. Now the zone, also known as the flow state when you're performing, is the state that you're in where everything just feels easy, right? Effortless and natural. A really great story of an athlete performing in the zone comes from a tennis player that I have worked with. This tennis player explained to me how there was this one match that she played where from the beginning to the end of the match, she felt absolutely locked in. Every single point felt easy. The ball seemed bigger that day. Her movements felt more fluid. And she just felt like it was effortless to go from the beginning of the match to the end of the match. Everything was easy. Her thoughts were good. And she was in the moment. She was flowing. She was in the zone. Now, that sounds like a pretty good state to be in when you play, don't you think? You know, when you think back to your really great performances, the ones that stand out and at, that are at the top of your mind, I would imagine they have a lot of the same kind of characteristics from the tennis player that I just said, right? You're in the zone, you're flowing, things are easy, it's natural, it's effortless. There are these days where everything is just easier for you. But here's the frustrating thing about playing in the zone. We cannot force playing in the zone. By the very definition of what it means to play in the zone, you cannot try to be in the zone because then you're putting too much tension and too much forced effort into your performance. Whenever you are performing in the zone, you know, one of the descriptor words that I used when I was talking about the tennis player was that things felt effortless, right? It felt easy. It felt natural. When you try to force a good performance, it won't feel natural. When you try to force yourself to play in the zone, it will not feel easy. It feels forced. You're trying to press. You're trying too hard to play well. So unfortunately, this isn't something that we can just flip a switch and all of a sudden have you playing in the zone simply because by the very nature of performing in the zone, performing in the flow state, it's not something that we can force. But what we can do is we can look at these underlying principles that make up a zone mindset. And then what you can do is you can try to develop the skills that match that principle. And so that's what we're going to do, right? I want to break down what are these three main principles that I see in all the athletes I work with who perform in the zone. Then I want to give you some simple tips that you can use to apply that principle for yourself. Principle number one is being present. One of the main mental game challenges that I help athletes manage is sports performance anxiety. Sports performance anxiety is a challenge that will keep you from playing in the zone. When you are in the zone, you are fully present. You're focused on what you're doing and your mind is not wandering into the future and drifting into the past and stuck on previous mistakes. You are simply focused in the present moment. Any athlete that I've worked with who has been in this zone state, they have expressed that they have been present. A really great example of this comes from a cross-country runner that I have worked with. Now this cross-country runner was experiencing a lot of different races where he wasn't doing very well. He was hitting a wall and he was finding himself slowing down. But then there was this one race that he had where everything became a lot easier. He found himself in the flow state and in the zone. When he was describing to me the reason that he got into that zone state, he said that before the race, he really focused on using some breathing to center his mind and center his attention in the present moment. And as he was running, especially in the beginning, he kept his mind from drifting too much onto what will happen in the race and what the result of the race will be. And he kept his mind present. As he went throughout the race, he stayed present even when it was painful, even when it was hurting, even when he hit that wall. And the more present he was, he was keeping his mind, the more he stayed in that zone state. And then he ended up having a personal best on that course. Whenever you are wanting to perform in the zone, instead of trying to focus on performing in the zone or this, you know, this quote unquote flow state, try to focus instead on being present. Now, what does it mean when I'm saying being present? Well, whenever, you know, whenever we're talking about being present, we are always referring to your attention. Let's look at the opposite. What would your, what would your attention be like if your attention isn't present? Well, this is where you find yourself thinking about how the game's going to go, right? So you're thinking about all these different outcomes that will happen. When you think about the outcomes that will happen, 
do you typically find yourself playing better or do you find yourself playing scared and worried and starting to become anxious because you're thinking so much about how you desperately need to play well? Another way that you might not be present is thinking about past mistakes, right? So if you're stuck on a, a previous mistake that you just made, that means you're not present because you're thinking about the past, which might end up causing you to worry about the future because you're worried about, will I make this mistake again? When it comes to being present, we are talking about your attention. When we are talking about your attention, we can simplify that to your thoughts. So how can you, you use this principle of being present for yourself to help you perform in the zone more often? Well, you want to try to be present with your thinking. But unfortunately, that is a lot easier said than done, right? Being present is, is a very difficult thing to do at any, any given time during the day, but especially during a performance because there are these outcomes that you want to achieve and there are these mistakes and past experiences that are hard to stop thinking about. But the simple tip that I have for you here is you want to set yourself objectives that are in the present moment. Now, objectives can take on many different forms. We can have physical objectives such as focusing on pumping your arms. That's something that a cross-country runner is doing right now that I just began working with because when he focuses on just pumping his arms, it helps him stay the pace that he wants, but it also keeps his attention in the present moment on himself and not starting to think about what the result of the race will be. Another example of a physical objective is a baseball player focusing on really watching the ball or a golfer focusing on their one swing thought. So we have these physical cues that you want to focus on, and by focusing on those physical cues, it keeps your mind present. Another way that you can keep your mind present using an objective is focusing on your breathing. So the objective could be I want to focus on my breathing. When you focus on your breath, naturally your mind is present. And a third way that you can use an idea of an objective to keep you present is to set the objective of having positive thoughts. When you focus on trying to have more positive thoughts, you're having more positive thoughts in the moment. And if you want to have more positive thoughts and you're really trying to have better thoughts when you play, will you allow your mind to travel into the future or the past and think about what will happen or what has happened? Or will you have positive thoughts about what you're doing right now? If you know that you need to be present and you're trying to use positive thinking to help yourself stay present, you're going to have positive thoughts about your performance right now. Now, you may be wondering why when I'm talking about being present, when I'm talking about the zone, the flow state, I'm giving you the tip of thinking. Because one of the characteristics of being in the zone is this kind of positive state of not thinking a whole lot, right? Kind of your mind goes blank, but in a good way. So why am I giving you, giving you the, the idea or the recommendation of thinking about these, these certain things when the ultimate goal is to not think and to just play? Well, it's because if you're not in the zone state naturally, right? So you're not just finding yourself performing in the zone that day um, kind of out, of out of chance, right? Well, we then know that you're going to be thinking about something. And so if you're going to be thinking about something, we need to make sure that what you are thinking about is beneficial. It's positive. And if we look at that zone, that zone state, we know that the zone state means you are present or you're present when you're in the zone state. So if we can keep your mind present by focusing on one simple thing that's happening in the present moment, it's more likely that you'll play in the zone because you are keeping your mind present by using your thoughts to your advantage. So the first principle here of playing in the zone is that your mind is present. Principle number two is positive thinking. Now, I just mentioned that positive thinking is a way that you can keep yourself present, so we're starting to see how this is linked to the zone state. But when we really look at this principle, what we see is that when you have negative thoughts, so thoughts that are um, considered unhelpful, we could classify those as anxious thoughts, negative thoughts, um, thoughts about previous mistakes, fearful thoughts, any sort of thought that does not help you play well is a thought that will take you out of the zone. But if you are thinking positively about yourself, we'll see your mind stay present more, but we'll also see your performance increase. A great example of this actually comes from um, another tennis player that I've worked with. Because with, with tennis players, you know, there's so many points happening throughout the entire match. And it's crucial for them that they are having good thinking and good thoughts after each one of these points. Because, you know, if, if you're a tennis player, and this is same, the same for all sports, if you get down on yourself after missing one point or, you know, get going down in a game, if you start to get down on yourself and have negative thoughts, it's only going to make matters worse. But when you can have positive thinking after points, 
even if you lost the point, still have positive thinking, you're going to perform in the zone more often. And so there was this younger, this younger tennis player that I was working with, and he and I spent a lot of time getting him to have more control over his thinking. As soon as he got more control over his thinking, what he began doing was between every single point, whether he won the point or lost the point, he wanted to have positive thoughts. Now, positive thoughts, if you won the point, might seem more straightforward. You would think, okay, great shot. You know, that was a great point. But what about positive thoughts after you lose a point? Well, positive thoughts after you lose a point are thoughts that help you move on to the next point. So he would say things to himself like, forget about it, I'll get the next one, let's bounce back. It's just a different way of thinking. When you can keep your thoughts positive like that, you keep yourself more in the present moment, but you also keep your confidence higher. If you wanna perform in the zone, and you wanna let go, you wanna simply play, you wanna trust yourself, there has to be that type of confidence there. The more you beat yourself up, the more you get down on yourself, the more you criticize your mistakes, the more your confidence is gonna drop. So the less trust you'll have in yourself at that moment. So how can you use this principle for yourself? How can you take this idea of positive thinking and apply it to your game to help you play in the zone more often? Well, there are two ways that you can have more positive thinking. The first is really paying attention in the moment to your thoughts. This is where you work on reframing negative thoughts, but you also work on proactively having more positive thoughts. And that's exactly what the tennis player did, right? He paid attention between points to having better thinking. So he started to develop the habit of positive thinking, no matter if it was a, a, a one point or a loss point, if, if he won the point or if he lost the point, he had positive thinking. So he worked on developing that habit. The more he paid attention to that, the more he applied that, the easier it became for him. So for yourself, you want to think, you know, depending on my sport, when do I need to have this positive thinking and how can I develop that as a habit? If you are a swimmer, you probably need to have some positive thinking while you're actually swimming and then especially before the race. If you are a golfer, have positive thoughts before you approach the ball, when you're standing over the ball and then after the shot, right? The tennis player examples, you know, make sure that you're having positive thinking after every single point. Baseball and softball players before at bats, when you're in the field between pitches, have positive thinking. No matter what sports you play, there are times where you need to have positive thinking. And the truth is the times you need to have positive thinking is all the time if you want to keep yourself in the zone. But to make it actionable, choose one specific point within the game where you need to try to have positive thinking, just like that tennis player committed to having positive thinking between every shot. The other way that you can work on having more positive thinking is rereading a self-talk list before every single time you play. You want to do this before practices and you also want to do it before games. A self-talk list is a list of statements that are confident statements, positive statements, and statements that build the beliefs that you want to have about yourself and your game. When you read these statements before you play and even before you practice, what you're doing is you're priming your mind to have more confident and positive thoughts. If you do that before you play and before you practice, and then you focus on those specific moments during matches, during games, when you want to have positive thoughts, it's much more likely that you'll have positive thinking, and positive thinking is a key principle to performing in the zone. And principle number three is playing freely. There is no way for you to play in the zone if you are trying to force a good performance. It's so easy to try to force a good performance when you're trying to play in the zone, and that's why I said in the very beginning that we can't force the zone, right? We can't force you to get into flow because as soon as you introduce tension and trying and forcing to your performance, you are no longer playing effortlessly and naturally. So you have to get yourself to play freely. A really great example of this comes from a lacrosse player that I, that I worked with this past summer, and he's experiencing a lot of success so far this fall during their fall season. When he and I began working together, he was struggling with a lot of performance anxiety and a lot of fear. When he played last spring, he was holding himself back, he was hesitating, and he was playing timidly. All of that type of negative play stemmed from his fears about what would happen. What we worked on was getting him to shift his focus, getting him to build his confidence, and getting him to let go and play freely. And that's exactly what he's, he's been doing this fall. He's been playing freely, and he's been playing his best lacrosse. His coach even talked to him this past week and told him that he expects him to be one of their top point scorers for this upcoming season. So he's playing incredibly well. But it's not just the results that are indicating that he's playing well. It's not even the results that he and I have been kind of giving so much um, celebration to, right? What we've been celebrating is the fact that he's just simply allowing himself to play freely. 
because he's playing freely, he's putting up good numbers. Because he's playing freely, he's impressing his coach, but it all comes back to him being able to play freely. The reason that he's able to play freely right now is because he's let go of his fears. He's let go of these worries. He stopped trying to force himself to play well and to control the outcome. He's allowed the outcome to be a byproduct of playing, and he knows that in order to get that byproduct that he wants, he needs to play freely instead of trying to play in a forced way. So how can you use this principle of playing freely for yourself? Well, when we look at playing freely, we can't overlook the fact that playing freely only happens when you trust yourself. You have to trust your talents. You have to trust your skills. The way you trust your skills is we first need to make sure you are preparing. That's something that this lacrosse player has done really well. He trains a lot on his own physically, and through he and I's work together, he's been working on, on preparing mentally as well. So for yourself, make sure you are preparing as much as possible. Go through your physical preparation throughout the week and also start using some mental preparation as well. And the one tool that I have for you that will help with your mental preparation is visualization. Now visualization can be a very simple exercise, but it can also seem difficult, especially if you struggle to visualize at times. But this visualization that I have for you is super simple. All you want to do is every single night before you go to bed, you want to close your eyes and you want to visualize yourself playing. You don't want to get too complicated with this. You just want to visualize a game and go through a few different scenarios during that game. Now, as you are visualizing this, you want to narrate what you see to yourself. So you don't want to just try to close your eyes and picture it like you're watching a movie. You want to picture it as though you're watching a movie with somebody narrating specifically specifically play by play what's happening. The reason that you want to do that is because you want to keep your mind on track. You know, so for example, if I'm visualizing myself shooting shooting in basketball, right? So I'm going to visualize myself coming down the court, catching a spot up three and shooting it. I might say that, okay, I, I see myself running down the left side of the court, the point guard's dribbling up the middle of the court. I go, I run down to the corner. He gives me a crisp chest pass. I catch it. I turn, I shoot, I see the ball go into the basket, right? So it, I don't need to get into too much detail with myself because I'm going to be seeing what I have seen in real life. I'm going to be seeing that in my mind, but the point of narrating it is that when I narrate it, I keep myself on track. So I go from this step to this step to this step, and then I see myself make the shot, and then I'll go into the next moment within the game and keep visualizing that. The reason that you wanna use visualization to help you play freely is when you visualize throughout the week and you visualize going into a game, you are building confidence and trust in yourself. And remember, the best way to play freely is to trust in your game. The only way to let go and say, hey, I trust that I am skilled enough and prepared enough today in order to perform well is to actually have that level of confidence in yourself. That level of confidence has to come from your actual preparation, your physical preparation, but mentally you want to be priming your mind and building beliefs that equal confidence. And you can do that through the use of a visualization exercise. And when you visualize and when you prepare, you have more confidence. When you have more confidence, you play freely. And playing freely is a key principle of playing in the zone. So in summary, playing in the zone is an incredibly beautiful state to be in as an athlete. However, it is not something that we can force. When you try to force being in the zone, you keep yourself from performing in the zone. So you want to stick to three key principles to help yourself play in the zone more often. You want to be present, you want to think positively, and you want to let go and play freely. If you're interested in learning more about one-on-one -on -one mental performance coaching or any of the sports psychology programs that I have available, I've put links to those in the description below, or you can head over to successstartswithin.com to learn more. Thank you for watching the video, and I wish you the best of success in all that you do.